there we go. Hi. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. It's very nice to see you. It's nice to see you. Um, I've been looking forward to this all week. I'm a, I'm a very big fan of yours and your series. And now, of course, you have the Disney Plus film streaming. Um, but thanks for making the time. I know you're kind of making all the press rounds. So I appreciate no, it. No, you are very special to me, uh, as special as one of my children, which I in, in no way have. <laughs> right. So, so I'll take that with a grain of salt, I guess. But I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, well, uh, first of all, con congrats on um, th this last year. Obviously, series two of This Way Up has gotten a lot of love. And now you have uh, Home Sweet Home Alone. Um, Well-remembered title there. Well-remembered title. Yes, yes. Um, but j just for starters, how did you first come into the mix for Home Sweet Home Alone? I saw on Seth Meyers that obviously you kind of um, grew up at a certain age with these original films. So it must have been kind of a full circle moment. Yeah, I suppose it did feel like a full circle moment. The answer to how did you first come across this role, I often feel is really boring, is that I auditioned. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, people are like, oh, I, I stumbled upon a script under a stone. <laughs> and then right. later on, a wizard came and asked me three questions. Um, but it, it was just a bit more boring than that. Yeah. My agent put me Pretty straightforward. I auditioned and got the part. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'd love if there was an anecdote attached. Um, well, we, before we, we bring up to the present day, um, we here at Backstage, our audience very much is kind of the working actors and creators of the world more early on in their career. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love to hear just how you first got into the performing arts, because my, my understanding is that they came into your life uh, a little little later than some. You, you studied at Trinity, a more traditional educational route, and before going to Lambda. So what was your journey Not like? Not really, into... though. I think you don't okay. ever, I think nothing is ever a wasted, I'm um, sorry to go, no, that's wrong. Yeah. No, <laughs> correct me, correct um, me, please. But, no, it, in terms of, I think that's a, a fair enough assessment of maybe like uh, success or doing well, but in terms of actually performing, like I would try and still do try to do as many things as I can and it's never wasted. And like when I was a kid, I wrote all of my school plays, mm -hmm. uh, always cast myself as the lead, um, never held an open audition to see if anyone else wanted to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I, I would definitely try and do it. And none of those things that I did ever went sometimes I'll still like come up with a bit of stand up now and go, oh, I remember making a joke about that when I was 12. Maybe I'll bring that back. Um, and then when I went to university to do the traditional uh, route of just doing a degree, uh, there was um, a, a theatre society there. And that was definitely like a big bit of luck because I am... Um, uh, I f kind of fell into a comedy group that was starting up there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it at the time, but the comedy group would maybe be the thing that would stand the test of time to me. And one of my best friends, like a lot of things are a series of accidents and failures. And I think I've had a hefty amount of both. My friend said she was going to drama school in England. I didn't even know what a drama school was. Right. Um, but I was like, yeah, okay, I suppose I'll follow you to England. It never occurred to me to go to England before. Um, and so I, I auditioned and got into drama school. But then when I got out of drama school, I had no agent, no work. It was a complete and utter shock to my ego. Because um, I thought, ah, Hollywood will just come along. Oh, you've been a drama school. <laughs> They've been looking for you, yes. Big movies and... In a way, I'm glad that didn't happen because I do think I would have become, I'm not sure if I can use the word dickhead on the backstage podcast, uh, live Insta. You're, you're fine. You believe. Oh, rain, thank yeah. God. Okay, because <laughs> I would never want to use it without checking. Um, <laughs> but I do think maybe if things had taken off when I was in my early 20s, I probably would have become an absolute douchebag. Um, so it was a, a series of failures from that. Uh, and I think community and community of other friends and actors was always a thing that kind of kept me going alongside yeah. promo jobs, handing right. out things at tube stops. That's you what know, you got to do. Yeah. Nutrition bars hustle. and the yeah. like. Yeah. Well, I, th I think it's funny that uh, you, you rewind to the beginning and you were writing your own plays for school and putting yourself as a lead. And now that's basically what you're doing for Hulu. Yeah. So, so really. <laughs> well, it's funny because you brought up Home Alone at the start. And I do think that sometimes we aspire towards other people's careers or go, how can I get what you've got? Mm -hmm. Rather than maybe focus on how can I use what I have to make something out of that? 
-hmm. And even mm -hmm. when I came out of drama school, like I was in a comedy group at university and, you know, been funny to, well, what some people would describe as funny um, at school and stuff like that. But I completely banished the idea. I was like, I'm going to be a dramatic actress at the National mm -hmm. Theatre and maybe do a bit of television if I have to pay a bill, you know, every seven years or so. And mm -hmm. um, it ended up being sort of comedy was a thing. I remember going to a casting workshop with casting directors for like new actors. And she started talking about being funny and mm -hmm you can't always control if you're the most beautiful in the room or whatever else it is. And sometimes people like looking at famous people looking out a window with some music. Mm -hmm. No one likes looking at a comedy with someone who's not funny in it, but famous. They'll always choose the funniest person, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. maybe the most famous. So when you're starting out and you feel like, oh my God, they're going to go with the name or there's going to be someone else attached, then maybe that's something of going, what can, what can you do that's sort of different that you could sort of go well that's my unique quality and yeah. maybe it could even be just like getting along with people because sometimes that's also why you get hired you're easy to get along with um so yeah so that's because it can feel like a you know especially if you haven't come from quite a traditional background i didn't live in a city or wasn't here mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know a sort of america like sometimes there, I'm like, yeah, i grew like up in hollywood map. and then yeah. eventually fell into it and you're like you grew up in hollywood <laughs> right um, they, they, they already have the advantage just by the locale Fair yeah enough. and i i think i think a, a, a grit and a constantly keeping on trying is a massive quality to try and as as young as you can just keep mm -hmm throwing uh, spaghetti at a wall and seeing what sticks because yeah. it's never going to be one thing. I've seen people who got into the big TV show or people who took off at drama school, but didn't maybe hadn't learned graft or grit. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it doesn't always have to be that way. I hope everyone just succeeds with complete flow and no problems. <laughs> but the reality is you do have to be able to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, like a farmer, you have to have a farm shop, you got to know how to grow carrots and feed, mm -hmm. you know, I was going to say feed potatoes, feed <laughs> uh, pigs, you know, you got to bale of hay, the, the farm list goes going. on. You got to bale yeah. of hay, man. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be a hay baler. You'd rather just focus on the farm shop. But sometimes, you know, that's what making the bills pay yeah. does. Well, well what, what was it in terms of you writing your own stuff? I, I know that you stand up was probably the, the best means that you had to really hone your voice and kind of find your sensibility as a writer. Um, what, what was that trial and error like? How, how would you describe the process of really finding what you wanted to say as an artist? Well, I'd been an, I'd been in um, a, an actor for a long time. And I think sometimes people don't realize that I was an actor for a long time before stand up mm -hmm. because in stand up, I had the sort of whoosh that I'd really wanted as an actor. Um, mm -hmm and was sort of disappointed that didn't happen. Like it just a sort of very easy whoosh. Mm -hmm. And not saying that my stand-up career was easy, but it was definitely easier than a lot of people had it. Um, and I think I hit a wave at the right time, which is the unfortunate thing you can't often control. I remember bridesmaids had just come out and people were starting to realize that women were people too. Mm -hmm. and big Imagine public. that. Oh my God, <laughs> shock, shock, horror, horror. Um, big revelation for people. Um, and so, uh, so I, I think I, I hit a sort of lucky spot, which had been forged by a lot of female comedians who had come before me. And um, uh, finding out what I wanted to talk about, it sounds really simple, but whenever I, whenever I try and write something about what I think I should write about, it always feels a bit like slime or mud. And if you find stuff that you find interesting, I think, I think there can be... Um, a trend to go, what, are, what do people want to watch now? What are, what are they into? What, what mm -hmm. do people want? And it is like going on a date and going, what, what do you find sexy? I'll do that. Mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. what sometimes sexy is doing what you feel is sexy and that will kind of come across. I'm glad I used sexy as a metaphor here. Yeah, thank you, um, thank you. <laughs> but the same with wanting to talk about something. I think even with my show with This Way Up, it felt like, oh, I, I like listening to people chatting. I like... Mm -hmm. I want to see the show. And if you make something you'd want to watch or you do an audition or you look at the script and maybe it's for an advert, maybe you're selling toilet roll because you have to pay the bills. Like it's always going to be, I remember when I was an out of work actor and I'd hear other actors talking about when I first saw the script and I decided whether I wanted to audition or not. And you're like, 
I would love to see a script in the first place for any okay. reason. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> right. You know, it, it sounds like a faraway problem. But if you are going into an audition, I think my advice would be do it as if you might have to do it for 10 years. How would you like to play this? Because if you do it in a way, because then you'll, you'll probably do your best job. If you do it mm -hmm. in a way that you can't maintain for 10 years, even if it is being the face of toilet roll, you'll be really sad, but it's more likely to kind of gain traction. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that would be, um, that would be one of my bits of advice there because it's the same thing with stand up. Sometimes you're like, I better say something about a movement. And then mm -hmm. you're like, but I actually just want to talk about the noodles I, you know, I ate today. Right. And that will sometimes have more flow to it that day and the audience will, will want to see flow more. They'll have to, more they'll, they'll want to see something important. Yeah. But yeah. Something important might come out of the noodles. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I like it. I like it. And and then obviously it's a bit of a different beast when you're acting in someone else's product. So so mm -hmm. to bring us back to Home Sweet Home Alone, um, how do you negotiate that between a acting on your own program versus acting out someone else's words? Does it feel like you're flexing different muscles as a performer? I mean, I'd much rather be in other people's work without a doubt. Okay. The pressure yeah. when you're, I mean, people, it's not like a creative freedom. It's immense pressure mm -hmm. because you are also looking after other people's words and lines, seeing if the set is running okay. Hey, are we going to get to lunch on time? It's not exactly just a, like my own show. It comes with right. loads of pressure, mm -hmm. big girl responsibilities. Um, whereas uh, when you're in, I much rather the collaborative nature of knowing it's also someone else's fault, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is from the dark side of it. <laughs> Going, oh, this doesn't go well. It's sort of yeah. totally on me. Um, <laughs> so it's much nicer to have, especially if you're with anyone who's collaborative. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, you're not doing a Shakespeare, nor is my work Shakespeare, where it has to be the exact same words. So when I'm on set, if I feel an actor can change some words to make it better, I'm like, yes, please. That's what you yeah. get. So yeah. I like to work on things where I can have a bit of input if it's if it if it might make it flow better because yeah, yeah. TV it'll be the first time anyone's ever said those words unlike theatre where it could be the millionth time someone said the words and I like I like I like the newer for me yeah, I like yeah. working in the newer world and I could watch you and Pete Holmes riff all day so <laughs> that's great we actually script that whole we script all of our thing we don't really um yeah well, well, well yeah I, I he's got... someone who definitely lives in the moment as well and i yeah. love it he's a joy to be around yeah yeah that's great um well as a final question for you then we, we're kind of dancing around it in terms of the, the the backstage uh mission statement but you have been at this for some time and obviously you've been sharing your wisdom with us today what is that one piece of advice that you would share with those early career creators who uh, don't know really how to get their start. How, how, how what, what are the first steps going to look like for someone who wants to follow in yours? I would say, and I know I'm in a, maybe a privileged position in that I can write, but I would say, and this is actually a quote from, I remember I watched um, a South by Southwest talk by Mark Duplass. And for those of you who are watching, you don't know who Mark Duplass is. Um, he and his brother have created a million things. Uh, they kind of came up with Greta Gerwig and made loads of stuff. And he did this talk at South by Southwest that said the cavalry isn't coming. So imagine no big, rich, pretty woman, uh, you know, daddy with the cash is coming. What are you going to do then? That's not saying minimize your dreams or make them any smaller. But what if the cavalry aren't coming and it's just up to you to make your own stuff? It is so boring to have to make your own stuff. It is hard work and it is tough going and it's not the easy flow of just getting a job and someone picking you up every day and you just kind of saying the lines, though that is hard work as well. But if you start off with that position, how would you move forward? Would you get a group of your friends together one weekend and make a short film on your iPhone? There are other phones available. Um, but you know, like how good cameras are now as opposed to when I started out like just constantly trying to make your own stuff. And if you can't connect with other people in your community who might like to make something and you could maybe offer them or they could maybe offer you something. Mm -hmm. um, but sitting back and waiting and, and that, that, that sort of workaholic tendency maybe never goes away, but just imagine no one's coming to help. And if they do, oh my God, it's manna from heaven, it's brilliant. 
but you'll find your people that way and you'll nearly always gravitate back towards a version of your people as you, as you go through mm -hmm. the industry. And I think if you've trained or if you haven't trained or, or you've lots of energy, which a lot of creative people do, it can feel like it's never happening fast enough. I still feel like that now. Mm -hmm. I wanted every single American in the world to watch This Way Up season two as soon as it came out in July. Mm -hmm. There was a pandemic. They had billboards, amazing, but no one was driving on the road. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's like... And you're like, ah, ah, but what if that was the only time? And you're like, well, if it's the only time, then it's past. And I have to remember that for myself still, that like, it feels like it can't happen fast enough because you don't have an office space. You're in mm -hmm. your own head mm -hmm. and you're not getting to create, which is so frustrating if you're a creative. If you're a creative person not getting to create, that is a really tough state to be in. But one thing I read from Amy Poehler's book was the difference between creativity and career. Mm -hmm. And we can get very mixed up sometimes because your career can be going very well and you can not be being creative and you can feel quite sad about it. And that's definitely happened to me at times. Mm -hmm. But if you're constantly being creative, even if you're doing a, a job in, in retail and you want to be in Broadway and in retail, you're like trying to make the the customers laugh or doing something within that form, which is just keeping yourself ticking over, then at least you're heading off on, on, on the right path and some, something will eventually stick, but it's less likely to be, to, some, to be some one thing. It's more likely to be a collection of stuff. Yeah. In yeah. the same way, me getting into the Home Alone movie was a collection of probably going out to LA and chatting to people for probably seven or eight years that eventually resulted in, in um, an audition with a UK director who might have known who I was from a million comedy things that I plugged mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. at in the UK. Um, there, and we shot that in February, then there was a pandemic and, and it only occurred to me that it came out, but we almost started making that. I auditioned for that this about two years ago. So wow. while it might yeah. seem like a thing, but I actually auditioned for it two years ago and now that's coming out, which is probably one of the more high profile things I've, I've ever done. So it does, and it still can't happen fast enough. And mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. that's probably what, that, that'll never go away. To, so to try and stay creative. Someone else um, there said, do I stay in the uh, accent or do I go completely gaga and say, mm -hmm. I don't, I would love to say I stay in accents, but I, I talk too much. <laughs> so I slip in and out because I'm like, look, just want to have a quick chat in the corner. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. So if, if a process is not your process and doesn't feel you, don't do it. Give yourself right. an easier life. Right, yeah. right. Well, I, I feel like I could, could uh, listen to you talk all day. And really, it's just an idea of being prepared for anything. Um, it, it's about the grind. It's about creating your own work, creating your own opportunities and being ready for when that opportunity comes knocking. Um, yeah. I'm, very, I'm very excited to see what you do next. And uh, again, congratulations on this uh, pair of projects for this year. Um, so stay well and uh, safe, safe travels. I know you're in Los Angeles, is that right? I am, and just someone just asked a question there. Do you think someone can be too old to start acting? And I would say no, but to stay creative, whatever age you are and that you don't know, it's, it's always nice to go Googling actors who started later and it'll make you feel better rather mm -hmm. than Googling what sort of a, a 21 year old is doing. Right. Try and follow, and don't follow the paths of people, but use them as hopeful stories for yourself. Um, because that you don't know when, uh, when stories land or stories hit and it could be yours, um, you know? So definitely, I don't say it's, it's too late for anyone. In fact, I, I was maybe too young for a time for when I was mm. starting out, you know? Yeah, as, as you said, that if, if you hit when you were 21, it would have looked a lot different and th than it does today. I saw someone shout out Morgan Freeman, Alan Rickman, you got Ann Dowd. All, all these folks came up when, when they were a little further along in their careers. And it, yeah, exactly. And, and I can more. imagine there were times when they were like, oh, it's, is it not going to happen to me? What, what, what stage of the game are you at? And I would say just find your creativity. Um, and like it is a business, that much is for sure. So like care for whatever creative thing you're doing, whether it's an Instagram or a short movie, try really hard if you're going to try. Like, like treat, every, I treat, I treat far too many things like they're the most important thing in the world. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's how you create um, a quality level for yourself to hit as well. Like I put a lot of pressure on myself when I started stand up 
to be as good as a lot of my friends were already doing it professionally. And while that was heartbreaking at times, it sort of does mean that I hit, I try to hit a certain uh, level as well. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you set a bar for yourself, for sure. You set a bar for yourself that you can hit. Don't yeah. set a bar for yourself like, I'm going to be 20. You know, <laughs> yeah. Barbie, actually, you let know. me get the time machine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. This was such a lovely chat. And um, again, stay well. And uh, we'll see you next stay time. Stay well and lean in on your community and lean in on your friends and stay creative. And that is the biggest, biggest bit of advice that I can give. Absolutely. We'll leave it there. All right. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye.